The CompTIA a troubleshooting process can be very helpful when it comes to repairing computer issues. For example, fixing an IP configuration problem, or perhaps ending a process so that a non-responsive application will close. The possibilities are endless. You never know what you might have to fix. But you do know that you will be troubleshooting on a regular basis. To do so effectively requires the use of a troubleshooting process. Let's talk about troubleshooting methodologies now. Troubleshooting processes are designed to help you logically solve problems. When you troubleshoot in a step-by-step -step fashion, you're more likely to, one, notice the obvious, the obvious problem and the obvious answer. Two, understand why more complicated problems will occur. And three, solve any type of problem faster and more efficiently. Remember to apply a troubleshooting process whenever you face a problem, especially difficult ones. You should write out the troubleshooting process. Write out what the problem is and how you are attempting to fix it. This helps you learn how to troubleshoot better, but also the simple act of writing this out or talking it out can help you to figure out the actual problem. Now, there are many different troubleshooting methodologies out there. Ultimately, you will need to use the one that works best for you or for your organization. But for many technicians, the CompTIA a troubleshooting process works very well. So let's discuss that now. The CompTIA a troubleshooting process is defined in the a objectives. If you haven't downloaded those yet, I highly recommend that you do so. Download them from the CompTIA website and print them out. You'll be referring to these often. The process is broken down into six steps. Step one, identify the problem. You want to question the user, identify any user changes to the computer, and perform backups before you make any changes to the computer. Step two, establish a theory of probable cause. And you want to question the obvious. Start with the most likely cause. Step three, test the theory to determine the cause. Once the theory is confirmed, determine the next steps to resolve the problem. If the theory is not confirmed, then you want to reestablish a new theory or escalate the problem to someone who can help you. Step four, establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. And again, escalate it if necessary. You know, you might have to bring in another tech. You might have to talk to a manager. No one technician knows everything. Number five, Step five is verify full system functionality and if applicable, implement preventive measures. So make sure you test the system. And step six, document findings, actions, and outcomes. Memorize these six steps. Before we go any further, it's very important to always consider any corporate or organizational policies, procedures, and impacts before implementing any changes. Let's go ahead and illustrate this troubleshooting process as a flowchart now. Okay, here we have a basic diagram of this six-step troubleshooting process. We'll start from the left and move to the right. First, the problem occurs. And the first thing you want to do really is open a ticket. Most companies, most organizations will have some type of trouble ticketing software or some type of paperwork that you'll need to start. And so you're going to want to do that. Documentation is an ongoing process unto itself. So this documentation will continue. This ticket will continue until the end of the whole process. 
But step one is identifying the problem. You're not actually doing anything yet. You want to go to the computer, look at it, listen to it. You want to gather information. You want to identify symptoms. Then you want to question the user. You're not blaming the user. You're just questioning the user to find out what happened to the computer. Were any changes made? Determine if anything has changed since the last time the computer worked. That's all part of step one. You're not doing anything really to the computer, but you're identifying what the problem is. Also during step one, you want to inquire with the user or users regarding any environmental or infrastructure changes. And you should also review the system and application logs and any other logs that you can get your hands on. It's so important to identify the problem. If you do it properly, it'll save you a lot of time through the rest of the troubleshooting process. So gather information. Don't just jump in and start typing things and messing around with the computer. Gather information and determine what has changed and find out as much as you can. Identify that problem first. Step two, establish a theory. Well, you don't know if the theory is going to be correct or not. You want to establish something. You want to question the obvious. You want to start with the most likely, the most likely cause. You know, if the computer won't turn on, maybe it's not plugged in. The most likely cause. Then step three, test that theory. If the computer isn't plugged in, plug it in and see if it starts. That will decide if the theory is correct or not. If it's incorrect, if your theory tests negative, then you go back to step two and establish a new theory. If the theory tests positive and it's correct, then you move on to step four. Step four, establish a plan of action and implement it. You know, whatever it might be, it could be plugging in the computer or it could be changing out the power supply or fixing the power button. Who knows? I don't know what the answer is going to be. You don't know what the answer is going to be until you test that theory. So once you figure that out, you want to establish the plan of action, whatever that is, fix it, implement that solution. That brings us to step five, where you verify system functionality. This is the second most important thing on the list here. In my opinion, you got to test, test everything you do. I don't care if it's an installation, a configuration, a troubleshooting, a problem, whatever you got to test it. Otherwise, you could be caught with egg on your face. You don't want that, so you got to test. But in addition to that, you want to implement preventive measures. Why was the computer unplugged? Who knows? Maybe the power cable needs to be rerouted. Maybe the cleaning crew disconnected it. And you want to fix the problem, make sure it doesn't happen again also. And then train users as necessary. Uh, perhaps the user needs to be trained on how the computer works. Uh, a little bit more information for the user can go a long way to you not having to respond to the same problem again. And once you've done that, step six, document. Again, you should have been doing this through the whole process. But at this point, you want to summarize your documentation. You want to make sure that you are explaining what the problem was, maybe how you tested it, what plan you established, and how you fixed the problem and that it was tested, and have everybody sign off on it as necessary. It could be you, could be the user that was having the problem, could be your manager, could be a combination of all those. So document everything, and then the problem is solved, and you can close the ticket once everybody has signed off. So that, in a nutshell, is a little flowchart of the six-step troubleshooting process. You can write it out this way, or you could just write it out on paper, step-by-step, step. Uh, however you want to do it, the best thing to do is to try to visualize what you're fixing. And writing it out helps you to visualize. It gets some of that stuff out of your head and onto paper and clears some space for your brain to do the, more of the troubleshooting instead of having to visualize everything in addition to that. So definitely go with the troubleshooting process. Use it to your advantage, and it'll help you to fix problems faster, more efficiently, and be a better troubleshooter in general. Remember, memorize this six-step process. And that's the end of this video.